So, you've heard of AI, and this channel is all about reading and studying the Bible. Did you know that AI can help you study the Bible better? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you three different AI tools that can really help you get the most out of your Bible study. And you're going to want to stick around to the end because this last one is my favorite and I've got a special way that you can access it. So you're going to want to stick around to the end. All right. The first one is the most common one, and that is chat GPT. Now, chat GPT, you access it by going to chat.openai.com and creating a free account. Now, chat GPT, yes, it is free. There is also a paid option. So as more and more people use it, it slows down. Think about like when you used to have cable TV, or maybe you do have cable TV, and as more people were watching, as more people, you had cable TV and you had the internet, and as people were using it, it would slow down. Well, chat GPT is fast most of the time, but it can slow down. You can, there is a paid option for $20 a month that will give you faster access, even during the busy times, access to some new features, those kinds of things. But chat GPT, is fantastic for studying the Bible. Now, here is what I love to do. I'm gonna give you, using some of these different tools, I'm gonna to give you uh, several different ways that you can prompt it. If you're not familiar with AI, AI runs by prompts. You kind of ask it something and it gives you information. Rather than a traditional search, that just sends you to different websites. This actually compiles billions of pages of information on the web and in books and all those kinds of things to give you answers. So you can do some things like going into, I'm going to go go right into chat, chat GPT and just say, uh, create a summary of the book of James in the Bible. And it will start going to work and you'll see it's just cranking through and gives you, I'm, I'm not going to read this whole thing here on this video, but you can see it is giving you the summary. The book of James is a letter in the New Testament written by James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's to Jewish Christians scattered throughout the world. Letter emphasizes the importance of faith in actions, urges Christians to live out their faith through good works. And you can keep asking it questions. So this first tool and the second tool, you the way that it works, you can just kind of pretend like you're talking to a friend and you say, um, can, can you go deeper on what James has to say about faith and works? And certainly the book of James, the author places a strong emphasis on the relationship between faith and works and it unpacks it so you can go deeper. So creating a summary of James and it even takes pieces in here. Like I was testing out some things like Ephesians summary before you can kind of see over here in the side that, uh, that it takes kind of what you first prompted it with and saves that summary until you delete it. So creating a summary of different books is a fantastic, and you can see it's going, it's going deeply <laughs> into this. Uh, so that is one thing that, that chat GPT can do. And I want to kick over to the second tool because this is the high level overview. I'm going to, this is, these tools are so powerful. I'm going to be creating lots of tools and resources and prompts that you can, you can deliver. Uh, but I just kind of want to give you the highlights so you can check out these tools and just dream a little bit about what you could do. So any of these prompts that I am using in the examples can be used with any tool, but I want to kick over from chat GPT to one that, while chat GPT is the most familiar, this one is probably the most unfamiliar. You might not even know that AI is in there, but bing.com. Yep. Bing. Like Microsoft Bing. Like it was a joke because people used Google <laughs> for so long. Well, what most people don't know is that Microsoft was 
the largest investor in OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT. So they've integrated so much of that right into their free search engine. Now, while ChatGPT has a free version and a $20 a month subscription version to get extra features and all that, uh, Bing is free and is just it's part built into their search engine. Now people say, well, I use Google for everything. Well, this is what Google still looks like if you type in google.com. <laughs> But Bing now has the, not only the normal search, but this little button up here, chat. And that opens up a whole new AI powered uh, resource and search. And so you can enter in the same types of things, but here's the unique feature about Bing that I wanna show you that uh, they're, they have what they're calling conversation styles and conversation styles right here in the middle. You can go to a more creative option, a more balanced option, which is the default or a more precise option. So I'm going to just type in the same prompt, uh, which is another one that you can use is I'm going to say what are, I've got kind of prompt got it here so that I can copy and paste. What are the main lessons from and let's just say John chapter six. OK, so let's say that you are looking at a passage of scripture. You're preparing maybe a lesson if you're a pastor or your youth pastor, or your Sunday school teacher, and you just kind of want some ideas to generate uh, thought. Well, you can take I'm going to just start with its default, which is the uh, more balanced approach. And I say I, I, I hit this here. Um, what are the main lessons from John chapter six? And as that's generating that, when once it gives you an answer, you can kind of do the same thing that you do with chat GPT, where you just ask follow up questions and it keeps building on this. And you'll see as it's generating here, you'll see this one down here that if you ever want to start from scratch, you just click new topic and it you, you can see, I don't know, maybe I, maybe on your screen, you can't zoom in there to see that uh, that little broom, but it sweeps it away. So John chapter six, this more balanced approach gives, you know, gives you this basic overview and you can do some things like, um, can you go into a bit more detail? Because again, you're, it, it's learning and answering. It's, it, it's a little spooky, to be honest with you, uh, but you'll, you'll see it'll, start searching, doing some searches. What I like about Bing is that while all these AI tools aren't just sending you to a bunch of websites that you need to, you kind of need to work your way through and find your answers and everything, this is compiling it. But one thing that Bing does is you'll see that at different parts in the answer, there are different links that will show up. And so you can actually look at this compiled answer. And if you want to go deeper into this, I think that Bing is actually the easiest tool to, to use to go deeper into there. It's got some different links here as well as kind of where this, so you can see what the sources are and it goes into a little bit more detail. Now, I just want to highlight the exact same prompt, sweep the topic, change it to a more creative approach. And and what you can do, you can with Bing, you can actually do exactly what I'm doing here, where you kind of have an idea of, hey, what are the main lessons from this or what is this passage about? And it'll give you some ideas and just simply changing the conversation style. That's what they call it. Conversation style from from balanced to creative to more precise. You're going to get different types of of answers. And um, and so you'll see this is coming in and, and he's kind of going almost as if he's he's writing a, a blog post about this or he's kind of giving an outline. And uh, and, and so you've got, you've got this with different highlighted pieces and all that. And you could say, you know what, I want to focus on the bread of life and ask it a question about that. But so that kind of gives you an idea of what that looks like. I'm going to just new topic again. Go to the precise just to kind of show you how this works. So I've just paid, copied and pasted the same one three different times using the different conversation style to get slightly different answers. 
and so uh, and so this get, just gives you know the the the, the more precise is going to be I, the way that I think about their conversation styles is balanced is just that the the more conversation or the um, whatever they called it the more what they say <laughs> more creative is is kind of unpacking it more and the more precise is concise is kind of how I think about that so that is the new the new Bing and you can uh, you can do so many different things like that. So create a summary of, and it could be a summary of whatever, right? It can be a summary of a passage. It can be a summary of a chapter. It can be a summary of a whole book. You can write in, create an outline of, and watch it create an outline and use it as a way to brainstorm. I always find that any tool that I'm using, whether it's an actual book, it's a commentary, whatever, I want the, I, I want any tool, AI or physical or digital or website, to be informing the conversation that I'm having with God as I read his word. And so uh, it's not that it's the answer to everything. You need to check things and look because it's an online digital tool. It's not always going to be perfectly accurate. Don't use it to build your theology on. And, uh, but, but as a way to do robust research very, very rapidly, and add another layer to that conversation, another layer of insight, things that you haven't even thought of. Every time I type something in to, to either Bing or to, um, or to ChatGPT or to this next one that I'm going to show you, quick write, uh, I find that it just stimulates my thinking in ways that I wouldn't have come up with on my own. And, and so you can, you can do and again, I'm going to create more videos that go into, hey, here are uh, so many prompts that will help you study a book of the Bible or a person in the Bible. Those videos are coming, but I wanted to give you an overview of some of the things you can do. It. Create a summary. What are the main lessons from? And now I want to go to my favorite tool, which is called QuickWrite. And QuickWrite is a tool that there. I will tell you, there is no free option. Uh, but I gladly paid for it. <laughs> it is it is absolutely amazing. It is a tool that is not built for Bible study, but I use it for Bible study all the time. It's actually built for writers. If you go to quickwrite.ai, uh, then you'll see that it's it, it says nothing about Bible study. I do know that the guy I do personally know the guy behind the company. I reached out to him after buying several pieces of his software and found out that he is a Christian. He deeply loves God and his word, and he is just brilliant. And he's hired this team of people to take AI and create this tool for writers. More on that in other videos about how writers, nonfiction and fiction can use it. You can, all, again, check out quickwrite.ai, or you can go to, and this is, uh, I'll, I'll repeat this at the end because this is too important, but if you go to quickwrite.ai, you'll see that it's $47 a month, which sounds like a lot, but it is well worth it. However, because I know CJ, the guy behind it, I've been able to work out a deal with him as an affiliate of his where I can give people lifetime licenses. So not monthly, lifetime licenses to everything that is and everything that's coming for 199, 197, something like that, under just under $200 is how much it is for you to have a lifetime license to that. And so I am going to show you now uh, kind of what I what I like about it and how it's different. So quick right again, you've got this kind of summary right here, similar to what uh, chat GPT had. But uh, but what this does is you can create a new project. So you just click create new project there or over on the left there. And normally it would be something like you've got, fic you know, I want to do fiction writing, nonfiction. These are all of the writing tools, but you there, they also have a power editor. And so the power editor is similar to that chat GPT or Bing prompt, but you could say something like um, find 25 Bible verses about uh, patience and click generate content. And you'll see 
that it not only finds them, you know, <laughs> as an AI language model, I don't have personal beliefs, but I'll gladly provide you 25 Bible verses about patience. And so you've got these references, but then also it's got the scripture right there. You can look up. It doesn't tell you right here what translation that is, but you can you can look up different ones. And uh, and I, I believe that. So here's here is what I love that about this is. Let's say that I am doing research on the topic of patience. So I can come into here and now that I have found these 25 verses, I can do this move content to editor. This is the, this to me is the game changer that instead of just having everything in one spot where I then have to, the only way to get things out of chat GPT or out of Bing is to copy it and to paste it, which makes the formatting all funky, all these things. You've got to open up another document, paste it in there, figure all that out. Well, this becomes almost, it just becomes streamlined. Because again, if I'm studying the Bible, I want, I don't want to constantly be opening up multiple things. I want to be able to either have my laptop or this works perfectly on a tablet. Uh, it works. I tested it out. It works on a phone. I don't highly recommend it because it's a three column thing and it just kind of gets funky, <laughs> but it works perfectly fine on my iPad. Uh, I put it in landscape mode and it's it's good. You put this over here and then you can you can see that you can if you only wanted a few, uh, then you, you could, you know, you can just kind of go and copy things and, you know, copy and paste it over. But you can also move this to the editor. And then up here, you can save the document. So I can just say, patience Bible study. And, and then I click save document here. And I will show you that once it saves, it's going to, every time that you save it, it's going to save your information and it's going to give you a new space to create more prompts. So if I go to back down to the power editor or, and I want to say, um, did, what did Jesus have to say about patience? And I can click generate content. And you'll see that Jesus, <laughs> Jesus had several different teachings about patience and you'll see different spots where they have it. And I can just come down here. And sometimes what I'll do is I will highlight the prompt that I used so that I, so that when I come down and I say prompt, this is just more, kind of a little, little bonus tip. So then I can say that, put that there and move that content to the editor. And you'll see there it is. And so you, and, and the, the beauty of this is that now, I can I, I can save the document and it'll, again it'll save and refresh. I can keep doing more research and I can do some things like if I'm building out uh, if I'm going to use this later, I'm going to show this to somebody. Maybe I'm creating a resource for my kids or for a Sunday school class, and I want to create a bunch of verses because I, I typed in 25. You could type in 50. You could type in 10. Whatever it is that you want to do. And then you see that it's basically given you editing tools. So I can actually say, you know what, this is my, whenever I get a new prompt, I want to have a different header on there uh, so that it makes it really obvious. Or I want to number this or I want to turn this into a quote or different things like this or insert a link. Right. If I found a different piece on there that I want to link to something else, you can add all of that in there. Click Save Document. It re and now the next time that you go to there, it is going to, you know, save the way that you formatted it. And the two and the two things that I love about this is then when I close this or which brings me back to the home page, you'll see I now have this patience Bible study. So if I'm in the middle of a 10 week study with my small group on Ephesians, well, I can have my Ephesians Bible study. And then I go in there and I do some research on the background of Ephesus or things like that. And then uh, when I'm going to, you know, a couple days later, I can return to it and say, hey, 
in Ephesus, they, you know, I, I wonder what was going on in Ephesus at the time. And so that was an, that's another prompt that you can put in is what was the culture like in Ephesus in the first century? Or you could even get specific from 60 to 70 AD, whatever it is. And, and then when you come back, it's right in there. You can go in, you can go in and then here is another kind of game changer for me is that this green button up here is export content and that exporting content that exports the whole thing as a word document and so there you have your word document instead of you formatted it it's the way that you want it you export it save it under whatever name you want it to and wherever you want and you're ready to print you can obviously add to it. You can change it. You can do whatever you want to it. But uh, but that ability for me, the ability to save my work, to go back, to rename it, to have it all in one place, to be able to continuously add to it. And when I'm done with it, to be able to just export it rather than constantly having to copy and paste, copy and paste from a web browser, which if you've ever copied and pasted something from a web browser, it makes the formatting all funky. And so uh, the ability to do that uh, is something that only QuickWrite has. So uh, I, I hope that you found these helpful. I hope that you will go and play with it. I will put the links down below to both ChatGPT as well as Bing.com as well as QuickWrite. But again, if you if you go to quickwrite.ai, there is no option at any price to grab a lifetime license. The only option you have is to pay just under 50 bucks a month for that. But if you use, again, this keithferrin.com slash quickwrite, that will take you to a page where you can get a lifetime license for under $200 all updates. And I know I was just sending some messages with CJ last week and he and his team are continuously making it faster, making it better, uh, adding things to it. I didn't even show you some of the image, the AI image stuff that you can create. Um, that's just absolutely amazing. So check out some of the other videos right here on this page. Uh, and if you're brand new to Bible study, by the way, then I would check out, you know, this this video that is right up in one of these places right here, here on this page. It's called the best Bible reading plan for beginners. So hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.